on the previous page, we kind of talked about scatter plots and how to take quantitative data as far as the response and the explanatory variable are both quantitative and then plot them as ordered pairs and create a scatter plot. Now we'll see what, how, how do we describe a scatter plot? If we see it, if you're describing this to someone who can't see it, how would you describe it? What words would you use and how would you analyze it? Um, we like to describe the overall pattern and deviations from that pattern. This is the same way we describe the distribution of one quantitative variable using a dot plot or histogram. To describe the overall pattern of the distribution of one quantitative variable, we describe the shape, the center, and the spread. We also describe deviations from the pattern or outliers. Similarly, in a scatter plot, we describe the overall pattern with descriptions of direction, form, and strength. Deviations from the pattern are still called outliers. So like on the previous page, we saw one where it kind of had, a, I mean, it had a bunch of dots. They weren't really lining up in a nice line or a nice curve. But if I had to think, if I had to guess, there's a line that kind of goes through uh, mostly and they're all kind of centered around that line. Uh, but something that's way off like this, or this little dot here is pretty far off from what I'm thinking is the overall pattern, he'd be an outlier. That's just kind of an example. Um, we'd like to first graph the distribution of the two quantitative variables in a scatter plot. Like we said, you got your response variable and your explanatory variable instead of X and Y kind of like. Um, and then we'd like to describe first the overall pattern. What direction are they going in? You know, as as the explanatory variable gets larger, what, what happens to the response variable? Is it getting larger or smaller? The form, what kind of a shape is it? Is it a kind of a curve that those all, all they're all lining up in? Or is it a line or, or what? And the strength also. And by strength, I guess we mean how close is it to a, um, a line or a curve or whatever form you're thinking. So think, think of this graph over here as one of them. And then maybe another one could be there. The dot plots or all the dots are a lot closer to a line. So that one, for example, they're all tightly packed, really close to a line. That one has much more strength. It's much closer to the form you're imagining it to be a line um, in this case. So it has more strength than the other one, the first dot plot up here. And we like to see how many outliers there are also, because it could be that we're, we have this situation down here, the second um, dot plot, it looks good, but maybe there's one outlier or two outliers, you know, that's basically, they look pretty good. They're lining up in a nice line here, fairly close to it anyway, but there are a few that are off, you know, so it could have a lot of strength, but they're still outliers sometimes. All right. And see, now we'll get more specific on those direction, strength, and uh, what was the other one? Form. Okay, the so first direction. The direction of the relationship can be positive, negative, or neither. This is where kind of the, how we used to learn how to graph a line using ordered pairs and slope and y-intercept, that kind of thing comes into play. If you kind of remember that, that's good. Um, but mostly what you have to remember is that if it goes this way, it's a positive relationship, like it says here. That's a positive slope, we used to say in, in math, you know, in algebra. Um, but if it slopes downward from left to right, like the second one does, the middle graph, then we'd say the slope is negative. And that's why they call it a negative relationship. Um, but then if it seems like it slopes downward and it slopes upward at different times, like in the beginning here, it looks like it's sloping downward and then it starts sloping upward, which so it's, I would say it's because sometimes it's sloping upward. It has a positive, positive slope. Sometimes it has a negative slope. It's sloping downward. It's kind of hard to say. So it has neither positive nor negative. A positive or increasing relationship means that the increase in one variable is associated with an increase in the other. That's what you see here. As you get larger X values, you're going to the right, you're also getting larger Y values, or you're going up. A negative or decreasing relationship means that an increase in one of the variables is associated with a decrease in the other. So as I go to the right, my, the values of my explanatory variable are getting larger, but the values of my response variable are going down as I look to the right. See the points are, as I go to the right, the points are getting lower and lower. That means the, the response variable value is smaller. Not all relationships can be classified as either positive or negative. Now we'll talk about the form. First, the form of, is the relationship, is, or sorry, the form of the relationship is its general shape. To identify the form, describe the shape of the data in the scatter plot. In practice, forms that we commonly use have mathematical equations. We, we look at a few of these equations in this course. For now, we simply describe the shape of the pattern in the scatter plot. Here are a couple of the forms that are quite common. First, linear form. That's what we've been talking about. It, it looks like a line instead of a curve. Um, let's scroll down and look at that now. Okay. We have a linear form, kind of like the pictures we were drawing over there. Um, the form of the relationship is its general shape. To identify the form, oh, we already said that. Okay, sorry. The data points appear scattered about a line. 
basically here. We use a line to summarize the pattern in the data. The study, we study the equation for a line in this module. It can also have a curved form. The data points appear scattered about a smooth curve. We use a curve to summarize the patterns in the data. So this one, if you ignore the blue curve, just imagine those, those dots, they're kind of, they don't look like they're quite a line. They look like they're kind of curving as they go up. They're kind of not sloping as drastically as they were. So it looks more like a curve than a line. Some are more obvious than others that they're a curve rather than a line. Now strength. The strength of the relationship is a description of how closely the data follow the form of the relationship. Let's look, for example, at the two following scatter plots displaying positive linear relationships. So the first one on the left has a strong relationship because the points or the ordered pairs are very close to the line that we're thinking best fits the data. The one on the right has weak, a weaker relationship or doesn't, it's not as strong, I guess, because a lot of the points seem like they're close to the line, but the majority of them are fairly far away. In a strong linear relationship, the data points closely follow the linear pattern. In a li weaker linear relationship, the data points also follow a linear pattern, but the points are not as close to the line. The data is more scattered about the line. Label labeling a relationship as strong or weak is not very precise because some people might see one as weak and some might see it as strong, especially when you compare it to another. Like if I drew another one where the, the points were even further away from the line, but they still look fairly linear, you might actually look back at this middle one here and the second one and say, well, actually that one looks kind of strong compared to this one. So it's kind of, it's relative a lot of times, but um, we can we can make it more precise. We develop a more precise way to measure the strength of a relationship soon. Outliers, okay. Outliers are points that deviate from the pattern in the relationship in the scatter plot below, this is, there's one outlier. Let's go look at that one. So you can kind of see it, it's in, they put it in red, but usually, you wouldn't put it in red. You just identify it with your eyes, but they'd all be the same color. Outliers are points that deviate from the pattern in a relationship in this scatter plot below. There's one outlier. Sometimes there's more than one. Just depends on the situation. 